Well, this is really what we've been waiting for. This is really a good test. So if you remember, we took this bunker and uh, with our own labor, cleaned it out, refurbished the drainage system, and we split this bunker into thirds. You can see this third here, we used the fabric. And uh, this middle section, we used the capillary concrete. And then in this last section, this last third, the billy bunker. So I think it's pretty easy to see how they all perform. Uh, this is a pretty severe, severely flashed bunker. You can see the exposed billy bunker aggregate here. It's all glued together, so to speak, with a polymer. We used our local sand here, <clears throat> so this sand is a little more prone to erosion than the better than the um, than the white silica sand you can see the exposed capillary concrete and then over here of course you can see the exposed fabric <clears throat> so clearly the fabric um, helped but when compared to the billy bunker and the capillary concrete it didn't hold up fair, nearly as well and the capillary concrete um, slough some sand off and the billy bunker very very little so this is a great side-by-side -side comparison here you can see this is the fabric i'm not sure if you can really see it through the lens here cameras tend to flatten the depth of field but this is our worst bunker in design in that there's some surface drainage that comes off of this green and dumps into this bunker. We tried our best to divert what we can out to the front to prevent this when we redid this bunker, but um, we, we could only take it so far. And you can see the erosion here is at a pretty high level. The fabric um, did a pretty good job keeping most of the soil from washing in the bunker, you can see the water got behind it here near the lip. I'm trying to look for a staple here. Here's a staple. So this is the problem with this fabric also, is that these metal staples, they get pushed up through the winter months. So what we learned is that there's a better staple out there. It's a plastic staple It's got that has like little barbs in it. And um, that tends to anchor into the ground much better. So what we found is that when these things come up, if you step next to the fabric, we actually made a tool. You just put your foot down next to it and you pull and you just remove the staple. If you don't put your foot down next to it, the fabric tends to pull up with it. You see that? And, um, and now you just, now you just uh, kind of broke that adhesion from the fabric to the soil. Because what we found is um, the staples are generally temporary. Once this fabric's in the ground for a while, it kind of gets, it kind of like intertwines with the clay base and it takes a lot to really dislodge that fabric with water coming up from underneath it. So there's a better staple out there than these metal ones. Um, but then, like I said, if you do have the metal ones, you just simply pull them out. You don't push them back in because then they just come back out the following year and, um, and be, they become problematic. So I really don't want to be redundant, this video is too long already, but just so you know, every bunker looks like this. We can go across and uh, I can keep documenting, but every bunker is washed out, uh, fines have washed into the sand, you can see that hue from the erosion from up above, uh, the fabric did its job, but it's a limited job in its effectiveness when compared to the better billy bunker. So every bunker is trashed. It's going to take hundreds of labor hours to fix it. And then when they're fixed, it's going to take several days, if not, you know, maybe more than a week to get it to settle back down and get playable at any kind of consistency. Um, whereas if you had the better billy bunker with the white sand, there'll be some tweaking that would need to take place. But they'll be playable. Far fewer hours spent, obviously, in fixing them. But, um, but more importantly, they're gonna be playing at a high level pretty much the next day.